So I want y'all to know this is going to be a political video. Just putting that out there. Letting you know. About to talk politics. To be honest, I didn't really like have a video. <laughs> I had some ideas and I was just like, okay, I'll talk about this or I'll talk about that. But, you know, nothing was really coming together. And then toward the end of the night, got the news that Donald Trump and Melania tested positive for the coronavirus. So earlier in the day, they had reported about Hope Hicks uh, testing positive for COVID and how she's, you know, one of Trump's, you know, most trusted and closest advisors, this, that, and the other. And the entire day, I'm just like, please don't let this man have it. Please don't let this man have it. And I wrapped up work, went to go take a shower. And when I stepped out of the shower, like my phone was buzzing. Like people were texting me, you know, all sorts of like comments on Twitter and everything. And the thing was before, before I'd stepped in the shower, I even posted on Facebook a status saying, we don't want Trump to have the Rona before the election. And I'm going to explain that. I'm going to explain why I said that, why, why I thought that. I get it. Trust me, I get it. I don't hate anyone. There's really only one person on this planet that I hate, <laughs> and it's not Donald Trump. But I get it. I understand that people do hate him. People want him to suffer. You know, people are just like, this is karma. This is what you get. Believe me, I get it. I understand. I get it. And look, yeah, you know, he deserves to suffer for the 200,000 plus Americans who passed and the millions who have suffered, whether they've gotten sick or whether they've lost family and friends. I mean, look, I am there with you, but I'm thinking about politics right now. We are now, I think, 32 days away from election day. It's too close for this shit. <laughs> it is too close. And my thinking is, you know, what is going to happen? Should, you know, should he fall severely ill? or die and is no longer on the Republican ticket. What is going to happen? You know, and it's just like, you know, who's gonna take his place? It doesn't automatically fall to Vice President Pence. I know a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, Mike Pence. And I mean, more than likely, sure, that's what's gonna happen. You know, they would, they would name Pence the candidate, but it's not a given. And he gets no preferential treatment. There are like guidelines, procedures laid out for both the Republicans and Democrats, they're different. Their procedures are different. But, you know, ultimately, the Republicans, you know, they could either have another convention, which they're not going to do 30 days outside of the election, or they would just have, like, whatever committee make the decision, right? So let's just say they name Pence. Well, you know, here's the thing. You have a lot of people, you have a lot of Republicans, prominent Republicans, who are voting for Biden simply because he's not Trump. But if you install someone like Pence, who's a little more their speed, I get it, you know, he might not be super exciting, but I think that the Republicans have probably had enough excitement for a while. So you install somebody like Pence as the nominee, and then all of a sudden those Republicans who hate Trump, well, now they're a little more comfortable with Pence. You know, he certainly aligns more with their, their beliefs. You know, he's still, you know, like an attractive candidate. So you would lose them. You have people who, for some reason, still say that they're straddling the fence. I think that you would lose them as well. And, you know, the Republicans are going to go out and vote. They are going to vote, you know, whereas, you know, we still have people, you know, whether you consider yourself Democrat, liberal, independent, whatever, and you still have, you know, people on the other side who are just like, hmm. I don't know if I'm going to vote or I'm going to abstain, going to vote my conscience. And they're doing that dumb shit. Just the election, you know, would just be totally fucked up. And then, you know, voting has started. People have started voting early. You know, if something should happen to Trump and he gets replaced on the ticket, people can claim, well, you know, I, I you know, I, I voted on this ballot and the ballot was changed. Or, you know, maybe they want to change their vote. We live in a very litigious country. So no doubt there would be all sorts of like lawsuits would crop up. It'd just it'd just be a shit show. There certainly wouldn't be enough time to print new ballots or anything like that 30 days out from the election. And our whole process is so antiquated. It's just fucking shit show. Fucking shit show. So the whole logistics of just voting and who's going to be in the ballot, like that, that, all that right there would just be in shambles. No, it's just, it's just a mess. It is an absolute fucking mess. And, you know, like I said, I get it. And, you know, people are making their jokes and they're being snarky and, you know, they're popping off all on social media and stuff. 
I'm just like, look, this is this is not the time to like celebrate. This is not the time to gloat and laugh and point. Cause I mean, shit, you know, I don't I don't see this being a good thing for those of us who oppose Trump. I just I don't. Not right now. <laughs> I feel like the GOP certainly has a contingency plan, if not multiple contingency plans for something like this. I certainly hope the Democrats have, you know, counter plans. This is all strategy, people. Like this is this is why I'm not happy about Trump testing positive for COVID because politics and elections like these are games of strategy and they're going to use all of this over the the course of the of, of the next 30 days. It's going to be one hell of a month. Fucking October surprise.